What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through tonight, Monday's baseball slate. Um, had a good weekend, uh, good football for me. Um, I had a really, really nice chance. I was in first place of the, uh, of the what's it called until the fourth quarter, till the fourth quarter sweep. the last game, the power sweep. Yeah. Um, that would have been, that would have been a fun one to win. And I thought I was going to end up second or third ish if, if the Cardinals could not give up anything more to the Panthers, but Baker had, I'm sorry, if the, if the Panthers could not give up anything more to the Cardinals, but Baker just kept turning the ball over inside his 20 and nothing you can do about it. Um, throwing it to the wrong team. So that was a little frustrating, a little tilting to end that way that, that day. Uh, and I, I played pretty big volume and I doubled my money. Sheets, we were talking pre-show. Sounds like you did pretty well. Uh, talk about that, and then we'll jump in the slate. Yeah, I pretty did nicely in football. Again, what I'm doing in football this year, I'm 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 uh, I'm max entering the Millie Maker every every week, and not playing much else uh, as far as DraftKings. I'm doing the same thing with FanDuel, and I'm playing 30 lineups in fan, in, in in Yahoo, just MMEing, using Sabersim plus my takes on top of it. See how I do. And DraftKings, I made like five percent on my money only because I would have done better or worse however we look at it but I put in 30 I forced in 35 percent Mitch Trubisky so the fact that I was able to win with that is a miracle yeah. uh fan fan duel I, I made um I was in for what I was in for uh 750 I cashed out for like 1300 so I did fine there but the real the real big one was 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 Yahoo where uh I played in for 30 lineups I ended up cat I got like a ninth and a 13th and like the big one over there. Oh, cash wow. like 3000. Yeah. So that was really good. And I guess the one difference between the Yahoo and the um, DraftKings and FanDuel, that was the only one where I didn't uh, impose my own takes on top of my projections. So we'll see. We'll see what, what, what that means. Uh, I had a good, <laughs> had a good week in golf. For those of you that were following that, I ended up getting oh. fifth in, in the lottery over there. Oh, um, did you really? Yeah. We were sweating that a little bit. Um, awesome. I didn't down, down, the, down the stretch. Um, uh, never really had a chance to get first or second, but you know, the, our, our, my highest owned guy, Burma, Burmester, which no one had heard of, he got like tied for fourth, and he he was uh, he was good. So golf was good, uh, football was pretty good, and I'm ready to uh, to deal with the last few big uh, big baseball slates. Yeah, let's do it. Um, we, we've only got a few more days for the baseball season. The yep. playoffs start on Friday, right? Let's um, go. We please, gotta start. We gotta we gotta start planning our. Uh, our plane flights. I know, I know. Seriously, unfortunately, yeah. we're gonna. Unfortunately, because the Mets just completely, as I knew they would, fell apart. Um, so they're not gonna. They're not. They're not gonna. They're not on the other side of the bracket as the Dodgers anymore, which is a little bit. Oh, so they can't meet until they, uh, they, they, have to, they have to meet in the, in the early stupid round thing. The, the wait, when would round. when would when would they play the Dodgers? If they won their first round against San Diego, they would play the Dodgers uh, in the second round. Well, I'll tell you that well because it was it was my team that screwed up and not yours. If that happens, maybe I'll just make the trip to LA for that. There one. you go. Okay, that you one. shouldn't have to just because my team was freaking horror show. I, I wanted to play. It's, I, I think that should have would have been a fun uh, division series instead. We yeah. Have so yeah. So we'll we'll see what happens. Four but, out of five uh, games with. Sure we still got we still got World Series possibilities. Um, yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. So I guess let me just I'll, I'll start my um my screen and then we'll yeah. kind of get started. Um. Uh, okay. So for first game, I think we can dispense with, um, because of the weather. Um, yep. I I really can't imagine that playing. Um, if you want, we could talk about it. I mean, I would I would I have imagine, Toronto. I I don't I don't think it's going to play. Um, the problem is, well, I mean, they, they have they have the rest of the their series in general, but the the Blue Jays need to play games because they're in the the wild card picture right now. So. It's a little bit tricky to let's just see. They've got, I mean, they're, they're not going to change their positioning all that much. So maybe it won't end up mattering. Um, they could change their position if they lost three in a row or something, but it's, it's a game you'd think they'd want to get in either way. Even if it plays, I don't have any interest. The only thing I'd be doing is playing some Barrios. And before everybody jumps on to, Oh, this happens every time Barrios sucks and all that. It's because he's 6,200 and because there's 20 or there's 10 mile an hour winds blowing in in 52 degree weather. That's, that's and that could be the best weather on the slate. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 it doesn't get a whole lot better from there. By the way, it's, right, it's, right. it's an ugly slate where I have only five teams that I even considered at first glance, and even those I feel I'm very, very, very underwhelmed about. Um, so let's talk about the next one. Um, let's move over to uh to tech New York and Texas. Well, um, let me start, let me start again because. Yeah, the Yankees marking a machine Failed. succeeded almost. I mean, they succeeded in making sure that every home game got sold out. Okay, because they wanted him, they wanted Judge to hit it at home, and then when that wasn't going to happen, they're like, okay, 
you know, it's 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 not the biggest deal because we'll get the home games later. But then when they clinch division, they're like, oh my God, no one's gonna come unless Judge still needs to hit the home run. So they took they sent the orders to Toronto saying don't let him hit the home run there. So they can get back and get the sold out for the last three games of the homestand, which they totally did. And now they don't care because you know what? Let it, it, now they certainly want him to get it, right? As opposed to not. So they'll, they'll hold the parade for him when he comes back. It's not a big deal, whatever. So, um, but uh, the Yankees marketing machine is is is, is a rough business. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the the Yankees pitch count machine is going to be in business tonight, I think, as well. Um, uh, I'm I'm not going to play Luis Severino. Um, I am not going to play Martin Perez. I'm not going to play the Yankees hitting and I'm not going to play the Texas bats either. So I'm kind of off of this game. What are you, what are you thinking? Yeah. I'm, I'm most, I don't mind that, that if you wanted to take some Yankees, I mean, these are, even though it's like, we all say Perez is underrated and he is like, um, you can still give up some home runs. There's just not that many spots to like, and you have a team that's really good historically against lefties, a lot of righty power. Um, Perez just doesn't give up home runs that much these days, but I, I'm still willing to gamble on a judge or a Stanton or something like that, but it's not, not all that interesting. I disagree with you about Severino. Um, this is the last chance they're going to have to get him to throw innings. So why wouldn't they take advantage and make sure no matter, no matter how he's pitching that he throws at least 85 pitches. Um, I don't see why they wouldn't do that personally, but it's hard to know. I mean, it's only his third start back. He's not going to get a chance to play in another one. Um I don't think I'm playing him anyway, so it's it's probably a moot point, but I don't think it's the worst play to play Severino here um at all. I just I, I just there's just other guys I like better, I guess. All right. So 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 I'm I'm back to I'm back to this 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 concept concept of mine. Okay. That the that, that Tampa's just rigged. Okay, like I, a couple a couple of weeks ago I was saying well, Tampa's getting all these guys back. I don't even know where the hell Tyler Glass now is. I'm sure he's just out for the season. And all of a sudden, he just, like, kind of reemerges, like, somehow. Right. Like, yeah. he's back. He's, he's perfect. He's, like, getting a little three innings last game. He's probably going to get five innings this game. I'm sure everybody's just dying to play this team as a wild card. I mean, I don't know. Um, so, um, in this particular game, um, I, I want to shout out to you for something else. I think I, I'm pretty sure that in his last start, Rich Hill was like one percent owned, and yeah. I think you liked him. Um, I did, and I did. he he completely eclipsed the highest scoring player on the slate. He eclipsed like the sum of all of his other fantasy points for the season in like one game. Yeah, um, I say that's not exactly true because the last time he was against Baltimore, he'd also put up a good score of twenty five, mm-hmm. and he was fifty seven hundred, and nobody played him. Um, uh, I, I use that as as background because uh, tonight I. I I don't think uh, I'm going to play him tonight. As a matter of fact, um, there there are only a couple of ways to play this slate, as far as I'm concerned, is that you either play the Dodgers with low-owned pitchers or you play something else. And and Tampa Bay seems to be the obvious something else that's kind of showing up for me, at least. Um, so Tampa is is my is my top non-Dodger stack for now, like in Fenway. And I don't even want to know what the weather is there because here, if it's anything like it is here, it's pretty gruesome. It's like freaking cold and windy mm-hmm. and god knows what's going on over there so if the weather wins that bad i will have to get i'll have to get off of it but at least from, from the numbers they, they they seem to me to be my favorite non non dodger stack at least for now um i'm not going to play glass now and i'm not going to play richard yeah it's uh 52 degrees 10 miles an hour blowing in from center um i'll absolutely play rich hill i have no problem there it is yeah there it is it's it's 5500 and 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 again like we say every time i mean it's usually about every third starter so he puts up a really like slate like he has a ceiling i mean he put up 39 points the last time he faced this team uh actually two two starts ago when he faced this team um he put up 39 not only that he put up 30 is that right oh no he pitched seven innings in that one yeah 39 fantasy points against these guys last time uh, I actually think that with this weather being the way that it is, the playing Rich Hill is not a bad decision. Uh, I'm not going to play the bats in this game. It might end up being okay for some of the righties because you still have the left field. It's blowing in from center, and in general, you're not hitting it out to center in Boston as easily anyway. It's you've got, you know you still have the green monster of favor. So maybe maybe a Tampa stack is reasonable. I'm not getting there. I I do like Rich Hill um, as a, long, a large field play. And I will definitely be making sure to throw him into something. Just uh, great, great pitching conditions. Again, you have a guy that's cheap who's going to be unowned. Even if he gets me twenty, I, I'm in. I'm in pretty good shape. So I, I actually feel good about using him tonight. I'll say something else. I mean, when when you have a slate like this where all the weather is kind of fishy, 
Um, this, this is de definitely to me seems like a Bobby type of type yeah. of, of of slate in that you know you really don't want to play like a zillion five mans. You know you want to you want to uh, you want to want to hunt and peck around a little bit for good twos and threes, man, three mans and stuff like that. Right, right, yeah. I think that's I think that's definitely reasonable. Um, and if the early projections are going into this next game are are anywhere close to accurate. I will have no interest in Carrasco. Now, if they aren't, if they are, if they aren't accurate and, and he ends up losing ownership, I'm happy to, to to play him at low ownership. I am not going to play a guy who has looked terrible his last couple times out um, with a team with, you know, they have something to play for. They want to win the game. Um, they still have a chance to, to, to get on the other side of the bracket as, as the Dodgers. And I think they'd want to do that and win their division, get the buy. But uh, I mean, you need you're asking Atlanta to cooperate then too. Uh, Carrasco at ninety six hundred at high ownership is a is a cross off for me. At low ownership is a guy who I will be more than happy to have high well well more than the field if he's and I, and I say low. I, if he's below twenty percent. I think I would take some I take a shot or two on him. If he's like ten percent, I would be all over him. Um, yeah, that's, that's where I have him. I have him currently at eighteen point five nine percent. Okay, I have him just below the threshold. Okay, so uh, right, right around there. Yeah, I would. I, would think uh, about there. I, I think he's going to be lower. Um, Me too. Actually, I don't know. Maybe, I'm not sure, but I, I think he'll be lower only because there's some guys I projected too low that they're going to be higher. We'll get to them later. It's but, an ugly um, game. Ugly game for hitting. I mean, you're, you have. 16 I'm here. I can low. feel. I see it. I'm, it's like gross out there. It's a disaster. Yeah. 57 degrees, 16 mile an hour blowing in from left center. But what I will say is this, is this uh, well, cut, cuts both ways. I actually see him very low owned on FanDuel um, to start off with. Carrasco? And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I see that. And and the one thing about it is he he could be, I mean, they they, they need to win. They're, they're basically out. I mean, like the division. I mean, listen, they have to like think win, win every game in Atlanta might have to lose every game or something like that. Mm -hmm. Still going to try to win, um, and I think that if if Carrasco is pitching well, they leave him in. But I think that if he's struggling at all, they they don't let him go through it. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that that's actually a reason to play him. I think um, just because he self correlates in a way um, mm -hmm. for GPP. So I, I don't mind him on Fanduel. I guess um, I, I'm with you on DraftKings a little bit. Like if he's twenty percent on DraftKings, I'm just I'm just going to do something different, um, and we'll get to those different people later. What do you think about the the Mets? Because the Mets are also showing up as as one of the top non Dodgers uh, stacks to play. Um, I know the weather is 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 just atrocious, but um, but you know Abbott's pretty awful, and uh, there's very few options on the slate. You know, so do you look at the Mets at all tonight? Uh, I looked at Abbott. <laughs> um, oh wow! Okay. I mean, it's it's you know it's. 383 pitches his last start. He's got a long enough leash and he's 5,200 and the winds are just howling in, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. Um, and I'm not very interested in the Mets. If I did, I'd be playing the lefties. Um, uh, that's, that's where I've got it right now. And there's the lefties you play for them are you have, you've got Nimmo. You could play Escobar who will be lefty because he's a switch hitter Vogelbach, um, Naquin. I, I just don't, uh, and, and Lindor, but I, I just, I don't like McNeil as much to play in DFS because he's a great singles hitter. He just doesn't, you know, as a, has to play it as a part of a five-man stack. I'm surprised their run total is as high as it is. Um, I probably am just going to skip this one uh, from a hitting perspective as well and just go with all the later games except for uh, the, the one we're about to talk about as my only other stacks <laughs> because I don't yeah, have so in doing this. I don't want to mess with it, the weather. Yeah, so the way I'm looking at Arizona-Milwaukee Arizona, Milwaukee is Milwaukee is the other um, – is another uh, – uh, you know, logical Dodger pivot. You don't have this. I don't know if you have the same weather concerns over there. It would seem weird that Milwaukee would have good weather. They anyway. don't have weather. They they don't have. A, they play in a dome. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Um. So so as well, I guess that's why Milwaukee's showing up. You know, as as, yeah. as a very very strong, very strong stack, very strong values, and very strong ownership. If you want to know the truth? They're going to be pretty high owned as well. I'm showing them at pretty low ownership, and I was sort oh, really? of surprised by that. But I thought maybe it was a pricing thing. I don't know. It's it's, it's but I, but yeah, it, it, that, that's a really interesting point. Whether or not they're going to be high owned or not. Um, go ahead, Chief. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, that's okay. But but the um, the real the real the real thing is is the Woodruff thing because I mean I, I'm showing him at 23 percent ownership. I think that's a colossal joke. I mean I I can't imagine he's not like clearly and and going away the huge chalk tonight. I mean, the only reason he wouldn't be is that it becomes harder to play Dodgers, I guess. 
but they're they're in a must win game, <laughs> and he's the top pitcher on the slate, and he's going to pitch a thousand pitches if need be. You know, I, I can't imagine why he wouldn't be the clear cut option, and I can also can't imagine how twenty three percent ownership, which is what I have him for now, is even remotely close. Like I think that if he's if this in the big bias, I think he's well over fifty. Um, and the decision you have to make, it's kind of it's, the only thing that makes it kind of a tough uh, uh, something to fade is because it's the one it's the one environment where where the weather is not in the guy's favor. You know, like right, you're saying, right. you know. But I mean, I don't know. It just seems seems like not playing him is just kind of asking for having a 35 put right at your face. You know, I know Arizona's like we've been in pesky all year, but they have nothing to play for, and 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 Woodruff is just I don't know. Uh, I'll take my 110 pitches with more. With Woodruff and, and take my chances, I guess. Yeah, um, I am. Um, yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm with you on all everything you said. Basically, I think he's getting. I think the projections are off on him, and I think he is a really good play. He's a guy, you know. Considering there's a there's a bunch there's some other options to consider a little cheaper, but I do like Woodruff. I have him as the projected highest scoring player on the slate. Um, and I am very interested in Milwaukee. I don't like that you get guys like Brousseau. Um, who likely will come out if it, once they bring a righty in. Um, but he is 2.3, and he's probably going to bat in the middle of the order. You could always play Keston Hara, too, for value at first base. I like uh, Arias, uh, McCutcheon. I, I think this whole lineup is very stackable, so I, I'm, I'm on board with uh, with the Brewers as being one of the other stacks uh, that we're going to consider today. So I have him pretty highly rated. Oh, would you been here for that? All right, so let's let's jump over to uh to Minnesota and Chicago in another one. I, I mean, Ooh, it's gross. It's weird. It's, it's you know, it's it's it, at least it's at least it's sixty. You know, and it's only a little bit of wind. Sixty, going. they'll be wearing bathing suits out there. Are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, both these pitchers we should probably consider. Uh, I mean, Bailey Ober just put up thirty eight fantasy points against this same team the other day. <laughs> um, do I think it's going to happen again? No. But I'm not exactly excited to stack against it. This I could see this game being a game because it's not awful weather where maybe you could make some arguments for the hitting side. But I think both pitchers are in play somewhat. Um, I don't think I'm going to end up getting to Cueto, but I think Ober, Ober has enough of a ceiling at 6,900 where I definitely can play him. Um, and I don't I don't currently have him like with it. What's his ownership right now? Um, have we no seen one's, this? No, no one's gonna no one's gonna play these guys at all. Every everybody's gonna gonna find the couple of hundred for Sandoval. You know what I mean? Like they're just but why is Sandoval that much better of a play than over? We'll, we'll talk about it. You know what I mean? But that's what's gonna happen. I mean, like he's playing he's against Oakland and people love playing Sandoval. So it's it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's what's gonna be. I mean But it's the White Sox against Ober. That's that's my that's my counter. Okay. Um well, I do think White Sox well, white because White Sox are still viewed as 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 good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Where 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 Oakland is still viewed as terrible, so that's that's what that's. I was I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I'm just saying what what where the ownership's going to be. I, I will say that if he struggles at all, I, I don't expect him to be around all that long. I think they're going to let him get his, you know, eighty ish pitches if he's struggling and ninety if he's cruising. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but I don't mind. I don't mind the, the overplay. If you want to, yeah, I think there's something. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's something to it. I mean, he just put up thirty eight against these same guys. Like, why can't he do it again? Um, all right, Philly, Houston, uh, two good pitchers. And I'm going to guess we don't get the best of lineups for Houston. Houston will do something the Dodgers haven't shown that they'll do yet this year. They will pull players like after a couple of bats and things like that, which is sort of the old school base baseball methods. Um, uh, it worries me in general for for stacking them, but what, but it makes them a lot easier to, to be open to at least taking a pitcher against. So I have I have a little bit of interest in Nola and – no interest really in McCullers personally. How about you? McCullers well, fine. What's that? Fine, McCullers. Okay. But I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna play. I, I I would like to discuss this this game a little bit. So the Phillies are in playoff contention. Yeah. Okay. I just I just went all over saying why Woodruff is like a lot, right? I mean, like because he's like a he's a great pitcher. He's he's got a big ceiling. He's got a hundred. You could pitch 110 pitches because Milwaukee wants needs to win or whatever it is. And and so my question, which I'm going to answer, rhetorical question is why is Aaron Nola any worse of a play? Right. So the answer that you know that that people will give, and it makes sense, is well, dude, what are you talking about? It's against Houston, you know, it's different. You know, it's, it's 
it's at Houston, it's different or whatever it is. Okay, um, fair enough. Um, I, pl I played NOLA and we played NOLA in tough matchups before where we've said it doesn't matter. And you're going to get him projecting lower, fine. You're going to get him at, 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 a, at a fraction of the ownership of Woodruff. And now you're telling me there's even a small chance that Houston, you don't get the best Houston lineup. I mean, that sounds good to me. I mean, that, that's, 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 that's where I'm coming in on this. So I, I actually think that Noah is kind of a sneaky elite pivot off of Woodruff. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I, I think you can play the two of them together also. Oh my. And I oh think, my. That, I think that is a, it's a build that people probably won't do. So I, I, I'm on board with that. I, I, and, and we just saw, I mean, what was it? The, the two back, the back-to-back -back games where the guys shut down, shut down uh, Houston. Dude, we saw, we saw Bradish destroy Houston. Yeah, I mean, Bradish and, and Kremer. Houston. Yeah. So why can't Aaron Nola go out there and do it, especially if there, there's going to be some potential lineup changes and some potential, uh, it's going to depend on what the lineup shows, but, but just remember that some of these guys might only get a couple of bats um, in that, in that game. So, so it's even more of a boost to Nola, I guess. But it is clearly a harder matchup still. Um, okay, so yeah, no, fair. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, fair. Um, I, I totally agree. When when we're talking about Sandoval as like chalk, you know, we should be looking at other things because I, I don't think that he should be like crazy, crazy chalk. Even though my first my first build has him in it because I liked him, but I wasn't looking at ownership. Well, I, th I think the main build is probably not going to be Woodruff. It's probably going to be Woodruff Kirby and not Woodruff Sandoval. You know, I think in the end, Sandoval did kind of disappoint his last start and Kirby does have the nut matchup. Um, so I do think that Kirby is going to be, I think they're going to find a way to get to Woodruff and Kirby um, as probably the chalky build, I think. Um, but I definitely, but, 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 but people are also going to, I guess we're jumping ahead of this, but, but if the people really want to play Dodgers, you could, pl you could play Kirby Sandoval together. Mm -hmm. Um, um, so anyway, I, I, which, which I'm, 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 we're, we're, I'm definitely jumping ahead with this stuff we talk about a little bit later, but, yeah, but yeah, I, th I don't think there's any world where Nola gets owned. That's that's my point. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I actually agree with that. Um, I, I do like Kirby for what it's worth here. Um, oh, we get yeah. Okay, we're there now. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Was well, that we're on that game? Oh, okay. I thought so. We're, we left the Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just yeah, uh, Kirby. I have is the best play actually. Um, yeah. Uh, I have him as the best play, and I have Seattle as a uh, as a uh, as a value stack as well. So I like Kirby, I like Seattle, and uh, yeah. What do you think? Love Seattle. Um, not a I mean, again, not not not, not you. That horrible hitters park plays better than these other good hitters parks with with the conditions that they're in. Um, I'll I'll take shots against Brian Garcia in a bad bullpen, um, and Seattle just is one of those other teams that that it doesn't have that they don't have to hit into a million things and they've got a powerful lineup they should be getting uh what's his name back today Rodriguez um, yeah he should be coming off the 10-day IL so he should be back in there and uh it'll make them a little more expensive but I think that that it's worth it and I I do have Seattle as one of my top right now top five stacks but I'm I'm, I'm deciding which of those are where I'm sounds at. sounds right I got him in the top five yeah all right um all right, let's jump over to the next one, San Francisco, San Diego. Uh, you have a bullpen game with the guy who you know you keep mentioning is the worst ever, and I'm not going to dispute you that he's that he's that he's good or anything like that. Um, I don't like ta attacking bullpen games in general, but things go out the window when you have such bad hitting conditions all over the place tonight, except for uh, and even a little bit of wind blowing in in San Diego. So my my long and short of it, I, I do think San Diego is completely viable as a stack here, and I. I, for some reason, want to play Milwaukee, Seattle, the Dodgers, and Angels ahead of them. But I, I think that they would be the next team for me. But I, I, I don't know how much of them I end up getting to by the end of the day. And uh, as far as Musgrove goes, uh, sure, as a pivot off of the other guys, uh, probably not for me. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I'm sure that that that. See, here's the thing. I'm sure that people, if they're thinking of playing Musgrove, are going to find the 300 for Kirby, um, or if they were thinking of Musgrove, we play them together with Kirby, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So I would think that Musgrove would be a little lower owned, but but the thing about Musgrove is they always play Musgrove. Mm -hmm. Like people always own Musgrove. So mm -hmm. I 
when I first looked at him, I saw 22% ownership, and I'm like, that seems a little bit high, like mm -hmm. on a slate like this. But every time I think that, it's like, you know, the Wolves Al 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 Torres. <laughs> like right, right. They, they always play him, you know. Uh, so so I'm, I'm not – I wouldn't bet on Musgrove being that 5% guy that people forget, you know. Um, the, more, the more I'm looking at this slate, Bobby, the more I'm thinking that Carrasco is going to be – like five percent old and not eighteen. I mean, that's that's, that's that's what I was saying at first. Doesn't it feel that way? I it feel. does, but then I'm looking at the, the, the matchup and the weather. I mean, you know what I mean? Like the run total is what scares you. Like, yeah, really. yeah. So, so maybe maybe not. So I I think I've learned my lesson. I don't think I'm. Uh, I think I'm like over over the world playing Musgrove this season. So I don't think I'm gonna. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna press that uh, today. Uh, just because again. Uh, I would want when he had a, uh, you know, much lower ownership, but he never does. I, did yeah. I have him here? No, of course I didn't have him here. And I didn't have him here. Oh yeah. I had him here with 13. I think that's what I have. <laughs> so these are when, he's usually when I have him when he has 13, not when he has the 30 or the 20. Right. Well, the one thing, the one thing with Musgrove versus it's probably should be noted though, the difference between Musgrove and Kirby, like Musgrove does have a longer lead. And um, you, gotta, you gotta pause. If you're yep. No problem. Hey, I'm recording. Uh, yeah, so M Musgrove has a longer leash and actually has been getting there plenty of times. And the matchup isn't great, but it's not terrible for him. Uh, I don't mind the Musgrove thing the more I look at it uh, today. Mm -hmm. but and, and maybe you play it with Kirby or something like that. Um, all right. Now we talk about the chalky pitcher. Dude, and I had this in the last one. I had all the hitting. I, all I needed was a freaking median outcome out of freaking Sandoval. I had Sandoval and Ray go uh, in those last two spots. And... Ray was on his hands and knees to get his 18 or 19. And Sandoval was just atrocious. Okay. Now they didn't let him throw the 95 pitches despite his atrociousness, but he was not good against the exact same team. Um, oh man, they're really going to do it again, huh? They're going to be 30% on again against the same freaking team. Um, I'd rather, I'd rather not. <laughs> Let's just put it this way. I might end up doing it, but I would rather not. How about that? Yeah, I totally understand. I, I I'll probably have some exposure to him. Um, I think that I think that on the other side, if if you want to get like I like the Angels tonight. Um, you know, it's only sixty five degrees, but you've got a little bit of wind blowing out, and I think that you could completely use the the cheap cheap A's where you need them. Uh, Dermis Garcia, um, whoever they end up leading off, you probably get Pratt Chad Pinder in the middle of the lineup. Uh, Langoliers is cheap. Seth Brown, if they let him play in the lefty, lefty is cheap. I don't mind both sides of this game, actually. And I'm a little higher on the Angels, but I don't think that they're like an automatic, you, you need to play them. Um, I just think that it's it's Adrian uh, Martinez and the Angels, uh, you know, their their lineup is, is solid enough with uh, as it's currently constructed. But we know that Otani and Trout are going to be really popular. I just don't know if anybody's going to play these other guys. So like, oh, Hope. At catcher, the top prospect in their organization at 2,300, uh, Renjifo. All of these guys I'm definitely open to playing today. Um, so I have the Angels ahead of the Padres behind the Dodgers, Seattle, and Milwaukee. Um, um, all right. So you feel free. I know, you know, I'll do this. Okay. You know, the Dodgers are playing Colorado, and, and Urena is not the greatest pitcher in the world. And the Dodgers have a really good hitting. So I think the Dodgers – rate to score a lot of runs and, and are probably a really, really good, really good team to stack in daily fantasy sports. <laughs> um, so if you want to do that, I think that, that you're very, very likely to have uh, to be on top, be ahead of the field as far as cumulative points are concerned. Um, so are the Dodgers going to be as popular as you think they are? Yeah. Are you sure about that? No, but okay. <laughs> you know. there's a lot of weird talk out there and everybody's where they haven't done it once. They have not pulled players out of a game in the middle of the game yet. If your guy's playing, he's playing. If he gets the day off, he gets the day off. Um, so that, that that's really your concern, right? Like you don't know how many innings you're getting out of some of these hitters even. They don't need to play them all. This is the last right. week of the season. But then again, they're about to have a long break and maybe they want to be in as good a form before that as possible. Uh, just in a vacuum, they're pretty clearly the top uh, stack on the slate. But I, I the early projections don't have them that I owned on Saberson yet. Um, I, my guess is, like you were saying, I think that that, that will change. Um, I, I believe if Joey Gallo and like Cody Bellinger gets the start as a lefty against Arena at 3K, I, I think people are going to play them. Maybe. Um, 
<laughs> you think I'm I shocked? Don't think so. Okay, we'll see. Those guys never, I mean, honestly, all year long, we, we, we say that Bellinger, like, literally is never 2% owned. He's always 1% owned at most. He's never, ever owned. Um, people don't well, play. The these these are going to be my, these are going to be my two guys. Okay, um, there you go. They're your guys then. That's great. And then, and then, and then, yeah, okay. So, Arena's, Arena doesn't give up as many home runs as maybe other bad pitchers uh, do. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to come up with reasons why the Dodgers aren't going to be really popular, but can't really do it. You got you got Chalk, you got Kirby, and what's his name Sandoval. You could just play the two of them and just play whatever you want. Um, find it difficult to believe they're not going to be owned. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, I have I have to get rid of the conspiracy theory that you know some people are just saying they're going to be low owned so that they can play them. <laughs> or something maybe, we're saying maybe. they're going to be two whatever two chalkies like play. i don't know what's going to happen but i uh i think they're the top stack i also don't think you could play them with with kirby woodruff um i don't think you play them with curry kirby sandoval i don't think you play them with, with woodruff sandoval i think you have to do something different pitching wise unless i disagree like with saying that. unless we go with gallo bellinger vargas yeah austin barnes or whatever, you know what i mean like i don't know who else is going to be in the, in the, in the lineup um, but that's, that's the way I feel about this. Yeah. I, I actually don't, um, I don't, I don't think that, that that's true. I, as of, I mean, I have to wait to see where the ownership ends up. I just don't see at these prices that people are going to be able to play them so easily. So, um, I, I, I don't, I, I like the Dodgers and, and I'm not worried about using them with any specific pitching today, um, as of right now, but if the ownership changes later, I think it's more the angels that you should worry about playing with the specific pitching, not the Dodgers. Um, because I think angels, I think the Trout and Otani are okay. going to be the two highest owned players in the slate. Okay. Um, and maybe Aaron Judge gets in there as well. But uh, but for, as far as I'm concerned, I, I'm very much okay with even a, a, a 10 percent ish owned stackage of the Dodgers is still is still probably too low for this specific slate. So I am still totally good with uh, just being well overweight on that and not worrying as much. But if you do, if you also if you need if you need money to save money to play them all and, and you want to play them with some other some other expensive bats. You might have to play a guy like Rich Hill or, or the uh, obviously Sandoval, the other obvious cheap one, but Bailey Ober. Um, you can get different and 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 give yourself a chance to win a tournament and play the Dodgers and Angels if you play like a Rich Hill Bailey Ober lineup. And uh, based on their last performances, they would have won this slate pretty easily. So I don't mind the idea of getting creative. I have I have the Dodgers ranked one, Seattle two, Milwaukee three, the Angels four, uh, San Diego five for what it's worth. And my main pitchers are going to be Woodruff, Kirby. The more we talk through everything, I feel the safest with those two. Yep. But I'm going to mix in some of the Overs, the Rich Hills, the Musgrove, Sandoval, Nola. Uh, I'll just sprinkle them around and mix them in with one of those other two. Uh, mostly it's going to be Woodruff for me. For me, um, Kirby, Woodruff, to me, are the two easy plays. Um, uh and they're my favorite plays. I like them more than Sandoval, but I think that the 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 GPP options are are Nola, uh, and Carrasco. Still don't know what to do about Musgrove. Um, the Bailey Ober thing is is starting to you know draw my attention a little bit. Stacks, I have no idea. I mean, I think the Dodgers are number one stack by a lot. And then I got to watch the weather because originally Tampa was showing up, and Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee obviously is not a weather thing, so Milwaukee's going to show up. Tampa, weather yuck, Mets, weather yuck, Seattle. The other one that I actually saw got to a little bit, I gotta look at it again, was Minnesota for some reason, but I don't know why I would play into that condition. I don't know. Um, so this for what it's worth with Tampa, I mean, I, I, the projections and just, just I, don't, I don't even mean the, the ownership projections, although that too, but just the raw projections alone have them basically makes me think that, I mean, they, they're showing them up as, as if they're going to be as owned as the Dodgers or more. Yeah, so that's I, I, I think about. when we try to get off the, the team so much, you know, it's like it's the Josh Jacobs for this week of the, of the NFL season. Everybody, Josh Jacobs is going to be 20% owned on every show. I can't believe Josh Jacobs is going to be 20% owned. And he ends up being 5% owned and going completely nuts, you know. Um, maybe that's what happens with the Dodgers tonight. I'm just throwing it out there. I, I don't think so, but uh, just keep in mind. He was like 20% in cash and like 5% in the – it was no so problem. weird, <laughs> super weird. Every, and everybody got on. And then the other one, every, I kind of like Rashad Penny. I kind of like this Rashad Penny play instead of him. And, and he was like 20% yeah. on it in the Millie right? What? No, he was like, oh yeah, no, he, oh yeah, he was like 30% in the, in the 333. Yeah. 
um, he, he went, they went crazy with him. So anyway, it is hard to know early in the day, but as of right now, I have shown the owners ownership pretty spread out for the stacks and I will be stacking all of the late night games along with the Milwaukee game. That's um, I will add by the way that um, on FanDuel, I did mention already. I like Kirby the, well, I like obviously Woodruff, but I like Kirby, same guys, Woodruff, Kirby and Carrasco over there. Dodgers, then Milwaukee, Tampa, Matt. So no, no real difference for me over at Fan, which I think I might play tonight. Yeah, I, that's uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, I don't have anything different on FanDuel, especially. Um, yeah, I really don't have much different. It's easier to get in the teams. I expect the, the Dodgers and other teams like that to be more popular over here because it's just easier to get anybody in you want to. Um, but I have Woodruff is pretty clearly the number one on FanDuel. Um, and that's pretty much it. I, I don't mind the idea of Carrasco though, over there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're going to do a, a football video, so we'll have that ready for you guys. And, uh, sheets, anything else before we get out of here? Nope. All right. Good luck everybody. And hopefully you guys take something down tonight.